It's amazing what updates can do sometimes. Take the OnePlus 5T for example. When we first got the phone, we were fairly impressed by the camera, but low light shots in particular were a little soft compared to our expectations of the new low light sensor on board. OnePlus's upcoming update changes that for the better though and makes low light photography a much better situation overall, something we're going to explore in today's in-depth review of the OnePlus 5T's camera. OnePlus sent us the Oxygen 4.7.4 update, which brings about some camera interface tweaks and some back-end fixes as well, an update that should be shipping out to customers of the phone sometime this month. Let's take a look at the hardware inside to get a picture of what we're working with. Up front is a 16 megapixel Sony IMX371 sensor with 1.0 micron sized pixels and an f-stop 2.0 lens. Around the back is what appears to be the same dual camera configuration from the OnePlus 5, and in the main sensor's case it is. However, OnePlus has replaced both the lens and sensor for the secondary camera. For the main camera, it's that same Sony IMX398 16 megapixel sensor with 1.12 micron pixels, but the secondary sensor is now an IMX376 K sensor with 1.0 micron pixels. Both cameras are behind an identical f-stop 1.7 lens instead of that telephoto lens that OnePlus 5 had for its secondary camera. Let's start on the front-facing camera, which is good, but nothing inordinately special. At 16 megapixels, it has plenty of resolution to produce a clean, crisp image, and with auto HDR support, it normally has pretty good dynamic range. White balance is excellent, and colors overall look good, as it does a great job getting the exposure right most of the time, where most front-facing cameras tend to overexpose shots. Beauty mode is disabled by default in this latest update, but can easily be enabled if you prefer that softer look. There's no portrait mode here, just good-looking standard-style shots. The camera software likewise is good, but not full of a ton of crazy modes. This is mostly a positive for me, and the new design goes a long way to helping make mode switching much easier than previous OnePlus designs. Launch speed is phenomenal, being among the fastest out there with one to two second launch times at the most. Focus times are subsequently excellent too, and while they're not quite as fast as those dual pixel solutions that have gotten popular on high-end flagships, it's still ultra fast and focuses in a fraction of a second. Swiping up from the bottom brings up the mode tray, and from here you can quickly move between modes with a single thumb and no confusion. My only gripes here are that the video mode is separate from picture mode, which adds extra time between recording a video or taking a picture, and the fact that the back button closes the camera instead of going back to the previous mode. Outside of this, the interface is great, quick toggles on top for each mode, and a handy zoom button right on the bottom for toggling between 1x and 2x zoom, with the quick ability to zoom in more by dragging it. By default, HDR is set to automatic, which you can either toggle on or off manually, or choose the HQ mode that OnePlus has had for years. It's this HQ mode that has seen a significant downgrade in quality over the years, and one I'm particularly disappointed in. Way back in the OnePlus One days, the HQ mode, which was known as Clear Image back then, made an unbelievable difference in overall sharpness and quality by taking multiple photos at once and essentially stitching them together. As it stands, I can't find any meaningful difference between Auto and HQ modes, and in all honesty, I'm not sure I can find a single difference in any of the shots I took when trying to compare between these modes. I don't know if it's broken or what, but it's the same in this update as it was in the software that shipped with the phone, so it's not broken by an update or anything like that. Subsequently, I feel like Auto HDR could be a little more aggressive, as it didn't always choose HDR when I thought it should. This ends up causing photos to be underexposed some of the time, as the software tends to prefer slight underexposure to overexposure in most situations, which at least in my opinion is a better option if you have to choose between the two. HDR mode does a great job of balancing out most situations, and while it doesn't offer quite the ridiculous dynamic range that the Pixel or Galaxy range does, it's still fantastic and comes out looking well balanced enough. Zoom detail as a whole is good, certainly much better in most situations than the OnePlus 5 was, and overall it seems that OnePlus fixed the weird issues we had with that phone's overall quality levels when it comes to zooming into shots. Just about everything looks as sharp as you'd expect, and while there's no longer an optical zoom for ultra-enhanced zoom detail, the phone still does a great job of processing photos in a way that doesn't crush zoom detail in the same way that the OnePlus 5 could do at times. Some other big players on the market are also guilty of this. Color temperature is absolutely phenomenal, and if anything, the phone can almost take scenes too literally at times, as we'll go over a bit in the low-light shots. It's ultra-accurate color, though, and will show a scene's proper colors almost every time, while plenty of phones tend to still get this wrong from time to time. 
OnePlus utilizes an intelligent shutter mode all the time that takes bursts of shots before and after the shutter is pressed, later deciding which it deems the clearest shot of the bunch. In scenes with lots of movement, you can see this happening if you swipe over to the gallery fast enough, as the thumbnail for a shot will quickly change over to the best shot the phone selected. I don't recall having a situation where I noticed the phone choosing the wrong frame automatically, but we have seen videos of certain scenes on last year's OnePlus 3T, where the phone chose a blurrier shot or an out-of-focus shot, over a more crisp one, so there's always a possibility this could happen without having manual control over the situation. Portrait mode continues to be one of the three major modes on the camera, but this time around I feel like it has taken a bit of a step back in quality overall. While I was easily able to grab some truly fantastic and dramatic portrait shots on the OnePlus 5, I had a much harder time on the 5T. I would assume this is because there's no telephoto lens, and in fact I had the same issue with the Huawei Mate 10 Pro recently, which features a similar dual camera setup with identical lenses for each camera. That's not to say you can't get some great looking shots from it, but overall it's not as good as some other solutions out there. What is particularly good though are low light shots, or at least in most scenarios anyway, and that's all thanks to the new 20 megapixel sensor that's built for low light photography. While it seems a bit strange to say that a 20 megapixel camera with 1.0 micron pixels can take great low light shots, this IMX 376K sensor is a special one that can combine pixels for better low light abilities. The result is pretty telling even when you compare it to low light champions like the Google Pixel 2. In many of these scenarios, the OnePlus 5T was able to gather the same amount of light in each scene and it traded blows at the Pixel 2 in many ways. Sometimes the Pixel 2 would have a sharper shot and sometimes the 5T would. The 5T got the color temperature right in every single shot, while the Pixel sometimes corrected it to be too yellow, but then there were times where the Pixel corrected the overly yellow light in real life to make a more attractive picture in the end. Oddly enough, when we compared it to the Huawei Mate 10 Pro another day, the OnePlus 5T lost to the Mate 10 Pro almost exclusively because it couldn't take a crisp shot to save its life. There's nothing in the exposure time that makes it seem like the shot should be as blurry as it is, but it's obvious that lack of optical image stabilization on the sensor could mean low light shots turn out blurrier than they otherwise should. Manual mode could help this as there's tons of options and an excellent interface to use. The trademark wheel interface makes adjusting individual settings easy and most everything you'd need to make a great looking shot is here. Wide ISO and shutter ranges are present, up to 3200 ISO and 30 second long shutter speeds for amazing low light photography, but of course you should bring a tripod for those longer shutters. There's even a proper color temperature wheel instead of just the usual presets, but manual mode doesn't have focus peaking or any real way of telling what's actually in focus, so that's not exactly great. Video is ultra stable thanks to OnePlus's awesome electronic image stabilization, which was debuted on the OnePlus 5 a few weeks after launch. That same stabilization is here and works amazingly well, and although there's some clear jitter in lower light situations, plenty of phones on the market still struggle with this issue in similar conditions. Even so, this is some of the most stable 4K video you'll find everywhere, and there are still plenty of phones that can't stabilize 4K video as it is. Overall, this is a great camera that's fast and produces awesome shots in every lighting condition. It's not the best, but it's also nearly half the price of many other flagships out there, all while offering a lot of the same specs and features. Check out our full review of the phone if you haven't already, and let us know what you think. We hope you enjoyed that deep dive review of the camera on the OnePlus 5T, and will subscribe to us for regularly updated content. Chat with us on your favorite social media network, and don't forget to check out AndroidHeadlines.com for 24-7 tech news coverage. Thanks for watching, and until next time.